you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a day of great things, a day of the release of your power, of your grace, of your mercy, of your provision, of your protection, and of your healing. Let the word come forth in line with your purpose and your will. And I pray that Jesus will be glorified Amen. and that your people will be blessed. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I feel led to call what I'm going to talk about today um, as seed mindedness. Mm. Seed mindedness. Why this topic? Christians can either be need minded or seed minded. So after that, is seed mindedness, which will lead to fruitfulness. So if we look at Gen Genesis, which is the beginning of the scriptures, and Revelation, the last of the scriptures, we find God talking about fruit and trees. Revelation, fruit and trees. If you look at Revelation 22, verse 2, it says, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bear 12 manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. So you see that God is con concerned about fruitfulness. He's interested in it. The first thing he said to Adam and Eve was about fruitfulness. And the last thing he'll be saying to the church is fruitfulness. So God is interested in fruit. God is interested in seeds. In other words, God is interested in reproduction, the ability to reproduce after its kind. And in medicine or in science, we know that every cell divides. There is multiplication of cells. Okay, so we find that God is interested in creativity, in multiplication, in expansion, in impacting the world. And so in Genesis chapter 1, um, 26 to 27, if we can look at it, i read from here. And God said, let us make man in our image. Mm. So we are in the image of God. Not bodily, God doesn't look like us bodily, but God is spirit, so we are in the image of God. We are like God, we are his offsprings, okay? So it says, let us make man in our image. It means that potentially God has put the seed of greatness in us, the seed of the ability to be fruitful in us, the seed of creativity in us, expansion in us, dominion in us. So God won't ask us to do something that he has not given us the ability to to perform. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. So the Bible says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And then verse 28, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, 
over the boats of the air, over every living thing that moved upon the earth. You see, coronavirus is a living thing Amen. moving all over the earth. And because of the dominion capacity of man, because God has put that inside man, inside humankind, a vaccine has come out within the shortest possible time. Whatever comes against humankind, the capacity to overcome has already been deposited in man by God's decree. God has spoken it from the beginning of creation that man will overcome everything. Man will have dominion over everything. Man will rule over everything. What hasn't man conquered on the earth? What hasn't humankind conquered on the earth? It is because you don't have to be a believer to, to achieve that. How many believers have been to the moon <laughs> or to the galaxy, to any of those places? So this is this mandate is not limited to believers. Yes, sir. Okay? It's not limited at all. If you are if you belong to the human race, the capacity to reproduce, the capacity to create, the capacity to rule and have dominion over God's creation has been released into you. And we have to believe that. We have to know that. And we should be seed-minded because you can't have fruit without seed. And you can't have seed, more seeds without fruit. So to produce fruit, there must be a seed. And to get more seeds to produce more fruit, there must be fruit. So if we are seed-minded, we're going to look at the things that we are doing, the works of our hands, how we are approaching situations, what our mindsets are, our ideologies, our thinking patterns, for us to be able to reproduce and create. Amen. This is irrespective of age. <laughs> Don't think I'm too old. I, I've done enough. You know, before I retired, my doctors, people I train have become professors, of course. There are so many of them. They are, they are leaders. They are in positions where they will tell me what to do. <laughs> they used to tell me that, sir, you have paid your dues. Just relax, chill. Don't do anything anymore. I said, no. No way. I'm going to teach my students. I'm going to do research. I'm going to continue to create, to think, to function. Once you say that I paid my dues and I should go and sit down, that's the process of death. Man is not created for not producing. Production is in the concept of the creation of humankind. So don't accept that, okay, I'm too old, I've done enough. You've never done enough. You don't even know what is the next season of your life. Amen. Amen. I hope I'm communicating. Yes, sir. And so, in Genesis chapter 1, from verse 11 to 12, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. The seed is in the fruit. And the seed will give birth to fruit. So the, I'm, I'm going to make some observations and some points. OK, so the first point is that we have to understand seasons. We have to understand seasons. My season is different from your season. When I'm moving from my summer season you might be in your winter season. So when you are looking at me, you will think God has blessed me more than he has blessed you. But there are seasons. When I'm going through my winter season, you might not know that you are in your summer season. And you're going to be saying, oh, God is good. God is wonderful. God is this. You see, you have to understand seasons. And you have to understand what God is doing in seasons. Okay, that way you will just be joyful because you know this, I'm in a season. I'm in a season right now. In fact, that is a season when God hides people. Hey. God, there's actually a season when God puts you on the shelf. Yes, sir. You know what it is like to be put on the shelf? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Take, take, what are the things that God 
or a woman kind will a man or woman will put on the shelf. Mm. Will you will you put something dirty, drab, or whatever on your shelf? No, it's always something precious for people to admire that you put on your shelf. Mm. And then, but, but you can start screaming, oh, God, I want to, I want to. And you are not exposing me. You are not showing me to the world what you deposited in me. And it's a song, keep it. Stay on the shelf for now. That is a season. That's always a season. Every man that God will use will go through a season of being on the shelf. Yes, it's a season of waiting. It's a season of developing your character and making you to become more like Christ so that when he exposes you, that you know, pride is not going to destroy you because then you've gone through your season on the shelf. Amen. Amen. So we have to understand seasons. And Genesis 8 verse 22 says, while the earth remaineth, seek time and harvest, cold and eat, and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. They shall not cease, it's a decree. Since the creation of the world, have they ceased? No. <laughs> so seed time and harvest. There is a season to plant seeds, another season to harvest. And in Galatians 6, 9, it says, don't be discouraged you will read in due season. You can say, I've been doing this. I've been trying my best. I mean, I'm not reaping. No, be, just wait. There's always a due season to reap. No, no seeds that are sown in fertile soil is wasted. No season is wasted. It says, let us not be weary in well-doing. So keep doing good. Yeah. Keep doing it. For in due season, we shall reap. If we faint not. Sometimes people are just at the edge of their reaping and they faint. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Patience is a virtue. Patience is the fruit of the spirit. Mm. Long suffering is the fruit of the spirit. Mm. Perseverance is a fruit of the spirit. Waiting is good. Waiting, patience, and faith, and hope. They are triplets. <laughs> they are triplets. So we should not give up and say, okay, I've been sowing, I've been doing this, you know. And Psalm 1 verse 3 says, and it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. That is a season, brethren. There is a season for everything. Preach the word in season and out of season. There is always seasons. We need to understand seasons. You know, in the Old Testament, the Bible talked about the children of Issachar, that they understood the times. They knew the seasons. That's under the old covenant. All believers are to understand times and seasons as kingdom citizens. Not like in the old covenant, only sons of Issachar. Now all believers. Because God can tell you your season. God can tell you why you're going through something. God can tell you when it is going to end. God can show you the future. God can show you everything that concerns your life every moment. So we are better than the sons of Issachar. <laughs> because Christ has been made unto us wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Everything that Christ is, he has given to us as a seed. And then we have to mature and become fruitful. Amen. Amen. I want to say something also that when we understand season, we have to understand that God can change seasons. <laughs> God can change seasons. God can accelerate seasons. Okay? God can compress all seasons to occur within a short time. And He's done it in the scriptures. He's done it. 
In Daniel chapter 2, the Bible said that he changed the times and the seasons. God can change the season. He has that power. He has that power to suspend the law of nature. Mm. He has the power to, to accelerate anything. And we see that. We, don't we see it? You find a young person, maybe at the age of 13 or so, getting a PhD. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, GC at the age of 10. Mm -hmm. that's, that's acceleration of seasons. Mm -hmm. Because there are a certain number of chronos for every child going to school to get the bachelor's, the master's, and then you get a child getting it. So all the seasons and the times and the chronos are already compressed for that child. So it is possible. It is possible that in the past we had, it had taken us long. You know, sometimes we talk about people, we say they are slow starters. Mm. Mm. Maybe you had that word before, I is a slow starter. But then within a, a, a period of that person's life, it's just flying, just flying, things while, you know, God just catching up on those seasons for that person. God is able to do that. Yeah. He, he does it in, 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 in professions. He does it with money. He does it with family. In all the reigns of life, God can compress seasons and can accelerate seasons. Yes, sir. So in other words, if you are kingdom-minded, God wants you to operate outside time. We are too familiar with the expectation of operation within time. We, we expect and we believe it. Okay, I cannot have this until I have done this. You know, that's our mindset. Oh, I can't achieve this until I have done this. Who says that? God does, still does miracles. <laughs> In this country, I know a couple, the lady, <laughs> Uh, who brought a request to a prayer meeting. And it was in Glasgow. And we had a fellowship, African and Caribbean Christian Fellowship. I was the president. And she had filled a course. And she couldn't go on to the next one. And we prayed, God change the laws. <laughs> Change the laws, accelerate the seasons. What happened? Something they had never done before, she failed. And they set that exam aside for her and told her to go to the next class, to the next place, to do the next exam. That's possible with God. Everything is possible with God. So don't let's think impossibility, let's think possibility. Even when we are at a disadvantage, let's think that God is able to turn everything around. This lady graduated, qualified professionally without passing that first stage. Hmm. In this country, United Kingdom. So don't think it's only Africa. <laughs> Amen. Remember, mm -hmm. Philip was transported, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, time was suspended. Elijah outran Ahab on his chariot. <laughs> Jonah was walking. It was a three days journey to Nineveh. But he began to enter the city on the first day's walk. So what happened? See how God handled time. And with Jesus in John chapter 4, Jesus said from verse 35, say not ye there are yet four months and then come in harvest. Look at that. Four months before harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. See? See time. God says it is now. Harvest is now. By, 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 Looking at time, it's four months, but Jesus is saying, it's now. 
Your harvest is now. Don't worry about COVID-19. Your harvest is now. God can give restoration and recovery of everything that had happened in the year 2020. Amen. And accelerates everything for you and I in 2021. Mm. And it will make us forget 2020. Let's trust God. He's able to do that. And he will. Amen. Amen. Another thing about seeds, Jesus said, one soweth and another reaper. Mm. See? One can sow and another reap. I sent you to reap that way on you bestowed no labor. Other men labored and you entered into their labors. Men, be expectant of God doing special things. Even where you have not labored, you can reap. It's part of the restoration, the recovery. Somebody has labored ahead and you just come and you reap. Do you know that that's possible? If you sow, you will reap. If you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. But God is able to make you reap where you have not sown. Is that impossible? Are children not reaping from where they have not sown? <laughs> Fathers do the labor and the children start to reap. Grandfathers do the labor, children start to reap. So you can reap where you have not labored. Amen. And expect that God to do miracles like that for you. I expect it. I've seen God do that in my life. Okay. In John chapter 6, Jesus was walking on the sea. The disciples cried out and he said, don't be afraid. Okay. Then when they received him into the ship, the Bible said immediately the ship was at the land where they went. See? God, time was created for man, not for God. The person who created time is not subject to time. One day is like a thousand years, a thousand years like one day. God sees the beginning and the end of time. So for his children, don't let time be a limitation. Let, let us move outside that box of time and operate in the kingdom. In the kingdom, time can be suspended. Mm. Amen. Time can be suspended. <laughs> I don't know if I'm communicating. Since I can't see your reaction. <laughs> We're good, sir. Okay. Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. That was a prophecy for our time. Look at what Amos chapter 9 says, 13 to 15. It says, behold, the days come. This is in last days. Behold, the days come. Say the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. Mm. And the, re the cradle of graves, him that soweth seed. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. See? Shall melt. Where the person who is harvesting is overtaking Sowing. He is sowing and harvest is coming. Speed. Time suspended. God is able to do it. And he has done it. And he will do it again. So what am I saying? God changes times and seasons. These are my key points. God created time for the natural man on the earth. But times are seasons. And seasons are accelerated for the new creation operating in the glory of God. Let's learn to operate in the glory of God. In the glory of God, time is suspended. Laws are suspended. Nature is suspended. In the glory of God, Jesus was able to walk on the water. Mm -hmm. Operating in the glory, even when it was illegal for the system to ask him to pay tax with Peter, he said to Peter, go to the sea, catch a fish, and you will find the money that both of us need inside the fish. You can't do that by imagining it. Mm. This is the operation of the glory. And God has put his glory upon us. He said, arise, shine, yeah. for your light has come. And the glory of God 
is risen upon you. Gross darkness will cover the earth. You see, he's talking about our time. This, this time when darkness is covering the earth, that's when the glory of God will be revealed through us. That's when kings will come to our rising because they will see our operations in the glory of God. They know that this person is not educated. This person doesn't know science. This person doesn't have a Nobel Prize. But there's something about this person's life that shows something is going on. What is going on? It says Je Jehovah. It is God. They will come. Kings will come to the brightness of our rising. Yes, sir. So as believers, our mindset must begin to change. Yes, sir. The mindset that says once you are 60, you should start expecting arthritis and all this stuff must change. Mm. The mindset that your pension is not enough must change. Yes, the sir. pension is not your source. God is your source. And when you're walking in the glory, God will arrange for people to meet your needs. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And even if you're sowing in, in an area, God can make you reap in another. God is, God is not a debtor. Mm. So in the glory, you can operate as a time. My second point, sow good seeds. Sow good seeds. Always be seed-minded. What am I going to be sowing here? Sow good seeds. And what are the things to sow? When I say sow good seeds. I know your mind will quickly go to money. Yeah, I'm talking about everything about the kingdom. <laughs> Number one, the word of God is seed. Yes, sir. The word of God is a seed. The seed is the word of God. The seeds that are sown will yield fruits. Yes, sir. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yes, sir. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Mm. What you're saying, you will eat the fruit of it because your words are seeds. The word of God is seed. Your thoughts are seeds. So what you are thinking, what you are saying, what you are doing, you will eat the fruit. So why don't we start by de deciding only life will come out of my mouth. Only life will come out of my mouth. Amen. Amen. I know a family. My wife knows this family very, very, very closely. The mother used to curse her children, not believing that it was a curse. She used to say, this one won't do well. That one is, I, I can only say in her language, to make it have an impact. You know, this one your head has become like stone. This one. And out of all her children, only one that she gave exception to. And these people are now in their 60s, in their 50s, and exactly what she said over her children. Everything she said is what we are seeing today. Wow. wow. Death. And life, they are in the power of the tongue. Wow. I have a son who is a doctor, and there was an exam that he did. I was the provost of the medical school. And because I was bringing reforms, I was after those who were going after girls in the class, all those lecturers, I began to declare to them, anyone I catch will go. And those who are stealing, the, 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 the money that was given to that department, and I was working with the vice chancellor. We set up committees. So they promised that my son would never become a doctor. So this exam, three tests, they gave him F, F, F. And in medical school, if you get F, 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 you are gone. So I, I decided, I called um, a, a, an older professor, more experienced, said, I, I'm withdrawing my son from this school because nothing will stop me from bringing righteousness into this place. I sent him to Ghana. He said, no, let's see what they want to do. Let's see. 
So I called my son. I said, look, you're a genius. You have my genes. You're a genius. You have my genes. Do you know what that means? Look at me. I'm a professor. You have my genes. I give back to you. You have my genes. You can succeed. You're a genius. Don't worry about the F. Just keep believing. My son learned from that. I had done that with him before, and I was doing it again. So he kept pasting scriptures on the wall of his room. Mm. Yeah, he, paint, he just pasted all the scriptures on his books, pasted scriptures. Mm. Scriptures of success, of making it in life. You see, he's a doctor he's practicing in Scotland. Mm. Death and life, they're in the power of the tongue. Mm. What you are saying over your children, if they fail, don't, don't, don't say they are failures. Yes, sir. Put your hands on their heads and prophesy their future. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So this the word of God is seed. And the heart is the soil of the word of God. And in Mark chapter 4, the Bible 14 to 20, the Bible said, the sower soweth the word. The sower sows the word. So the word of God can be sown. I do that a lot. If I don't preach what I don't do, I don't. Mm. If you know how much time I spend speaking the word of God into my life, <laughs> into my future, hey, brethren, I spend time speaking into my future, speaking over my life, speaking over my family, speaking over all the circumstances, speaking over nations, speaking over governments, because I know the word of God is seed. The sower sowed the word. So good seeds. The Bible says that the kingdom of God operates with the seed principle. Mark chapter 4 from verse 26. And it says, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground. See? The kingdom of God operates at, like by the seed principle. And should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. You see? The kingdom of God operates as a seed. And then it's in another verse is, where unto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain, it is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becoming greater than all herbs, shooting out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. So it's emphasizing in the scriptures that the kingdom of God can be sown. Can be sown. Grace Community Church is a seed that has been sown. The seed was in the barn. It is no longer in the barn. It is now in the ground. Mm. And be, the life, you see, what happens in the ground, you don't know. You don't see it. If you plant a seed deep in the, in, in the earth and you cover it, and you water it, you don't know what's happening anymore. Yeah. But you have faith. Yeah. One day, something will shoot out. <laughs> And it give you evidence. Oh, this is going to be fruitful. Yes, sir. This ministry will be fruitful. Amen. And it will branch. Amen. And a lot of people will get the fruit and eat the fruit and drink the juice. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Take it as a prophetic word. I'm a prophet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Faith operates with the seed principle. Mm. 
faith operates with the seed principle. The Bible says faith is like a monster seed. In Matthew 17, 20, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Faith operates like a mustard seed. And what is a mustard seed? It is the smallest of seeds. But it is a growing seed. It doesn't die as a small seed. It grows. It grows. So when the Bible says faith is like a mustard seed, the Bible is saying your faith must be growing. Your faith must be growing. And if your faith is growing, you can move mountains. In other words, you start by moving stones, and then you start by moving bigger stones, and you go on to moving bigger stones, moving a hill, and then you move a mountain. This is where we have failed because we, we thought that with the mustard seed, the smallest seed, you will move mountain. No, Jesus is saying when your faith is growing, it will grow to the point where you can move mountains. So some people have said faith doesn't work. It is because you are using mustard seed at its smallest level to want to move mountains. Let it grow first. <laughs> My thought of salvation, believers are fruit bearers. Say I'm a fruit bearer. Believers are fruit bearers. The mere fact that you're born again means that the Holy Spirit has deposited the seed to be a fruit. Yes, sir. So I'm a fruit bearer. You have to see yourself as a fruit bearer. You have to see yourself as a fruit bearer. I bear fruit. I'm the light of the world. I'm the salt of the earth. I also bear fruit. You know, when you eat fruits or you drink fruits, you feel good. So wherever I'm going, I must make people feel good. <laughs> so I'm fruit bearing. <laughs> so the more we sow, the more we harvest. Galatians 5, 22 to 23 talks about the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, self-control, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness. So when, when you come across someone who is not gentle, you know that person is not investing that seed that has been deposited. Jesus has given us all this. The Holy Spirit has given us the fruit then we must allow the seeds to be a more fruit, more fruit, more fruit. I don't know how much time I have. I could have told one story. <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians 4.2 says, don't think proudly of yourselves. Be gentle and patient showing tolerance to each other in love. Tolerance to each other in love. John 15, 1 to 8 says, I'm the true vine, and my father is a husbandman. Every branch in me that bear red, not fruit, it take it away. See? We must bear fruit. People have said they focus more on Evangelism as bearing fruit. This Bible is talking about Christ likeness. Mm. It's talking about character. Not the number of souls. If, if you can be proud and be winning souls, you can be angry and, and not tolerant, you don't have patience, and you can win souls. That's not what the Bible is talking about. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, it take it away. And every branch that bear a fruit, it projected that it may bring forth more fruit. 
God is about abundance. The thief come in not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. God is abundant God. El Shaddai, the all bountiful God. He wants to give and he wants to receive abundance. He's giving us the seed. He wants us to come out with the fruit. He's giving us the ability to be like Christ, and he wants us to express that ability for people to see. Let your light shine. Let them see and say, these people have been with Jesus. And in verse 4 of John 15, it says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. So as believers, to be fruitful, you must abide in Jesus. So what do we sow? What do we sow? I've said before that thoughts and revelations, thoughts and revelations are seeds. What are you thinking? Make sure that you are thinking the word. Because as a man thinks, so he is. Our thoughts determine our future as well as our words. Thoughts are seeds. Thoughts are actually words unspoken. Mm. And thoughts are pictures as well. We've talked about that before. Your action is a seed. Your action is a seed. Your money is a seed. Your time is a seed. You know that the Bible says, Blessed are the people who are merciful, for they shall receive mercy. I will show mercy to whom who is merciful. Mercy is a seed. Mm. If you sow mercy, you reap mercy. Mm. If you sow kindness, you reap kindness. If you sow gentleness, you reap gentleness. And you reap more than you sow. Amen. 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 And if you sow money, you reap money. <laughs> you reap more than you sow. You always reap more than you sow. And that's why Jesus said, by their fruit you shall know them. So if you see someone moving in supernatural power with the giftings of the Spirit, the devil can do that. The devil can do most of the things that we do. <laughs> you know, there was this Chinese that was ridiculing Christians, said they say they fall under the anointing, that they wave their hands and the people fall under the anointing and demonstrated it, told people to stay like 10, 20 meters away. And he just did his hand like this. They all fell down. He said, so what's the big thing about falling under the anointing? <laughs> okay. But Jesus said, by their fruit, yeah. you shall know them. Not by their gifts, by their fruit. By their fruit, you will know those who are from me and those who are not from me. So let's make sure that we are working on that fruit, allowing the Holy Spirit to help us. Jesus said, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. So how should we sow? Number one, the degree of sowing is important. If you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, bountifully you reap bountifully. Second Corinthians chapter 9, 6 to 10 says, but this I say, he which swears sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which swears bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Luke 6, 38, give shall be given to you. Great measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give to you. With the measure with you measure shall be measured back to you. It wasn't, Jesus wasn't talking about money, but it's applicable to money. Whatever you are sowing, whatever you sow over into your, the lives of your children, you will see the fruit. Hmm. 
see the fruit. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it was talking about money. It says, every man, according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And verse 8 says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Verse 9, as it is written, he had dispersed abroad, he had given to the poor, his righteousness remaining forever. And the thing about seed is that, verse 10, says, now he that ministers seed to the sower. Mm. Every seed that you have, it is God who gave it to you. Yes. Because it is God who gives power to get wealth. So when I have a seed in my hand, it is God who has given it to me. So he says, now he that ministers seed to the sower. If you are not a sower, God won't be ministering seed to you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for food. So in other words, God will take care of you, but he also wants you to sow seeds. Amen. Okay? And then the Bible says, and multiply your seed soon and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Because when you obey God, it is evidence of your righteousness, and God increase the, he increases the fruits of your righteousness. Galatians chapter 6 says from verse 7, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And look at verse 8. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. The harvest is always greater than the seed. Amen. But he that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Mm. So what do we sow? We sow to the spirit. And I read verse 9 before, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Do good always. Especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Let's make up our mind, we're going to be doing good. You can sow in all seasons. You know, Isaac sowed in famine. See what happened. You receive a hundredfold. And I've said that you can reap where you have not sown. Because you are sowing, you are sowing always, you will receive. So, what have I said? Be seed-minded. Don't be need-minded. If you are need-minded, you're going to say, I have so many needs. And then you don't sow. <laughs> then you don't reap. You don't get a habit. It's a consistent sower that gets even a harvest where he has not sown because he has sown somewhere else. Yeah. And I've said that my sowing is not limited to money. Doing good is sowing. Showing mercy is sowing. Helping people is sowing. Giving grace to people is sowing. Encouraging people is sowing. Comforting people is sowing. Okay? Exercising, eating good food, and all that is sowing to your health. Working hard in school is sowing to your future. So everything we do, we think, we act, is sowing. So if we are seed-minded, we are going to be thinking, okay, I have these challenges, but I'm going to sow. I've said it before. If we are sick, we should pray more for the sick. That's sowing. If you need money, you give more. That is sowing. If you need friends, be friendly. That is sowing. You want to, uh, let me tell you, as a teacher, we, you know, some teachers don't want to teach. They don't want to give knowledge away. But they become duller with time. Yeah. Yeah. The reason we are able to know so much in this little brain of ours is because we are teaching. 
we are giving knowledge away. So we are retaining more. We are getting more. That's good. In interacting with our students, they will ask us questions. They will also get insights into things that we have not got insights to. So we are gaining. It is the law of sowing and reaping. The more you teach, the more knowledge you have. Amen. Amen. The more time you spend with the Lord, the more of the Lord you will know. So you spend time with the Lord, it's sowing, you gain more, you know him more. So brethren, be seed-minded, don't be need-minded. He that observes the weather will not sow. Oh, it is raining. Which farmer will look at the weather a load to sow? If it is the season of sowing, no matter what is going on, the farmer will go and sow. Because he understands the seasons where he will reap. Amen. Amen. So your action is a seed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now we pray. Father, we thank you for what you are revealing to us that the kingdom of God operates as a seed principle. In what we sow, we reap. If we sow bountifully, we reap bountifully. If we even sow cheerfully now, our children will reap. When we show mercy, our children and grandchildren will receive mercy. Lord, we, we ask Holy Spirit that you give us understanding, that you interpret this word into our hearts, that Jesus was a seed, he was crucified, he was buried, and he rose from the dead. And he got the first fruits with him and took them to heaven. Thank God for the harvest today. Because Jesus was a seed, except the corn of wheat died. It remains alone. He died so that we can become children. Thank you for the harvest of souls. Thank you that he died as a seed, the seed of Abraham. And today, we have become children of God. We give you praise for this principle. And Lord, I'm asking that we will all fully understand it. That we may impact our generation. That we may have dominion and expand and rule in the place that you have given to us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, uh, Prof, for that wonderful message. And thank you for joining us once again on Facebook. Um, we are live every Sunday around about 11.30 a.m. We are Grace Community, a church, a local church with a global vision. We would like to encourage you to get in touch with us. If this message or any of the other messages have been of any benefit to you, we would like to hear from you. You can contact us on WhatsApp. You can send us a direct message or you can contact us through our website. God bless you. Have a blessed week.